What up, everybody? This your boy, B-Rob, and you are now listening to the S. Anthony Says Podcast. And after you're done listening to this man in his so, so savory voice, come on over to randomrobcast.com to where you can listen to the Random Ramblers with Rob. Yeah. Hello, hello, how you doing, how you doing? This is the S. Anthony Says Podcast. This is the S. Anthony Thomas, and this is episode number 283. How you doing? How you doing? I'm going to tell you how I'm doing right now, damn it. I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good because my back is not hurting as much as it was, and I'm feeling better. Oh, yeah, thanks for your concern and the kind words, you bastards. Folks... I was, I was uh, sitting at a friend's house and the, my friend was watching football and I saw a player get clocked, boom, knocked down and they walked him wobbly off the field and they put him inside of this tent immediately. Was just, they just pulled the tent down the same way you would pull a visor down on a helmet. And the announcer goes, well, what they're doing right now is they're taking John Smith and they're putting him through the uh, the concussion protocol and the, 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 the protocol and, blah, 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 and he goes through the whole thing. And I remember as a kid, when you got clocked playing football, they were like, yeah, 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 get your punk ass up and get back to playing. And when older generations, you know, you know, they, they, they of course, were even you know less stringent about those things because this knowledge didn't exist back then. But it's an interesting thing, the emotion, the, the, uh, the, uh, the concussion protocol, you know, it's like, up, 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 you think you may have a concussion or whoop, 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 we're pretty sure you have a concussion or whoop, 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 you know damn well you have a concussion, you gotta go through this protocol before you put you out on the field. If you pass, you can go back out and play. If you don't pass, we're gonna have to go further on and you may have to miss a couple of games. And why do they do that? They do that because if you, if you have a concussion and you go back out there, you may cause more damage to yourself. It's for your health and safety. And also, even in, ad- even in addition to your health and safety, you're not going to be good at making decisions because your brain is temporarily scrambled. That's the way it is. And it's a good thing. It's good for this player's safety. But I was wondering. I'm wondering if we should have a emotional concussion protocol. Don't you think we should? I think we should. And I'll tell you why, damn it. When do you make the dumbest decisions possible? Hmm? Right? You ever you ever been the uh, the rebound guy? Hmm? You've been the rebound guy and you didn't realize you're the rebound guy. You're the rebound lady. You didn't realize you were the rebound lady. You didn't know that they just broke up with someone or just got dumped by someone or just got cheated on by someone. You didn't know. You met them in good faith. You had no idea. You started to spend time with them. You started to invest in them. You started to invest in them emotionally. And then you then all of a sudden when they heal back up, they're not the same person they were when you met them and they drop kick your punk ass out of their life or they stop dating you or they start treating you like crap because they're with you, but they don't want to be with you. They made a decision on who to go with next while they were still dealing with the emotional concussion. They were still jacked up, still a little scrambled, still out of it. And that's what sucks about being the rebound guy, the rebound girl. Shouldn't say girl, rebound woman. Why do everybody default to girl? I gotta make sure I don't do that. But you gotta think about that, right? I remember when I got carjacked, and before that, I'd never really felt uh, uh, unsafe any place. You know, you have your, uh, you know, you look around if you're in a rough place or things look a little sketchy. But this was not some place that was sketchy. I was near my aunt and uncle's house, and then some guy jumps in and puts a gun to your head, and you gotta get out. And I realized from that point on, at that moment, from that point on, every decision I made after that, while I was still recovering from the emotional trauma of having a gun in your face, but someone almost could have easily killed you and taken your car if you didn't move fast enough. When you're still dealing with that as I was for the next little while, let's just say you probably wouldn't want to aggressively panhandle or walk up on me quickly while I was getting in and out of my car because it would not have gone well. 
I told the story on this podcast of a guy that was aggressively panhandling literally right after I got the car back from the police, still had fingerprint uh, powder on it and all that kind of crap or whatever it was, still had the, the uh, you know, the, the, the uh, numbers in the window to, to tell which piece of evidence it was. I got the car back. The battery was kind of drained down. I had to, re- had to jump the car, all of that crap. It was that soon afterward. And some guy, can I have some, can I, can I have some money? Can I have some money? I'm like, dude, leave me alone. And money, and he kept getting more and more aggressive. And I was, was still suffering from the emotional concussion. And the guy got too close. And I told him, dude, you know, I threatened him. And I was serious because if he had taken two more steps, I would have kicked him in his face. You know, I would I would have beat him down. And I think he could figure that out. But under normal circumstances, I would just say, look, dude, get out of here, man. And go on about my business. But because I wasn't thinking right, because I wasn't back to being me yet, because I had had that emotional concussion, I was about to beat this dude's ass when under normal circumstances, I wouldn't have beat his ass. Sometimes after things happen to you, you're not the same person the moment after it happens. There was a before carjack S. Anthony, and then there was a post carjack S. Anthony. Now, am I afraid when I park my car or when I drive someplace or when somebody walks by my car? No. But am I more aware? Yes. I'm not the same guy anymore. I look like the same guy, but I'm a little bit different. Right? You can recover from a concussion, but you know, you're a little bit different afterwards, even if you fully fully recover from it because you remember the thing you did that caused it or the thing you did, didn't do that caused it. I remember as a young man, in good faith being in a relationship, and when I started doing comedy, I was 17. So when I was 18, 19, and 20, the women I was getting to get on with were maybe somewhere between 8 to 10 years older than I was. And at that point, I hadn't been cheated on by anybody. I was a pre-cheat, as Anthony. It was pre-being cheated on. And I was a very trusting guy. I was that guy. I was very trusting. I was very sweet. And then you find out the person that you were getting it on with was getting it on with someone else. Oh, no. And you had definitive proof. Oh, no. And you didn't know it at the time, but you will now... A completely different person. There was a pre getting cheated on S. Anthony and a post getting cheated on S. Anthony. And what happens after that? The next lady you go out with or the next women you go out with. All I remember, I'm not the kind of guy that checks diaries. I refuse to do that. I'm not the kind of person that checks pockets. I'm not the kind of person that does the star or whatever to redial the last number. But right after I got cheated on, I was that guy. I was that guy. I'm telling you right now, I was that dude. I jumped right into a relationship right after I got cheated on when I was young. And I shouldn't have done that because I was dealing with this lady. She was older than I was. She was super duper smoking hot and we were getting it on. And I was very young, well, young not, not, not illegally young. I was like 19 or 20. And she was like 30. And I was jumping on top of her on a regular basis. It was awesome and great. But when you're post cheetahs, Anthony. In fact, I wasn't even S. Anthony yet. I was still just Steve. Pre, pre getting cheated on Steve, post getting cheated on Steve. And I was at her apartment and she went to go someplace. She went to the store. She said, no, you stay here. You put the thing in you. And we would put, I was, maybe I was cooking something or something like that. And she went out to get something. And I knew it was going to take her about 20, 25 minutes, maybe a half an hour to get there, grab it. It wasn't get back. And I looked in her. I went into the other room. I went to the bathroom, washed my hands. And I noticed her closet door was open. I also know that I was working a gig lad that weekend and she didn't come to the gig. And sometimes she didn't, sometimes she didn't. But this particular time she didn't. And she was taking phone calls in the other room sometimes. She said she was doing it to keep from disturb, disturbing me watching television. That may or may not have been true. That's that's not a bad thing. If I take a phone call and I'm on the phone with my friend, <laughs> this, that, blah, 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 and she's trying to watch a television program, I'll get out of the room. But this was not pre-cheat on, getting cheated on Steve. This was post, recently post getting cheated on Steve. And I was with this super hot woman and all of a sudden things that were normal that could be thought of as normal when you don't, when you, when you, when you're pre cheat getting cheated on Steve, things that you thought of as normal, normal, no big deal, no big deal. She can't come to every gig. No big deal. She, what, she, what, she can't talk to other people. What are you, an idiot? But she was going to be gone for 20 to 25 to 30 minutes and I knew it. 
So the food is in the oven. It's going to be done by the time she gets back so we can eat. Watch the movie. I notice the closet's open. And I know she's a little messy sometimes. Maybe I'll go in there and straighten stuff up. Yeah. So you walk into the closet. And it's a little messy just as you, as you thought. Then you're picking up the shoes and straightening things up. You're trying to be a nice boyfriend to your super hot 30-year-old girlfriend when you're 19 or 20. And you noticed there's her jacket. Let me hang it up. It's not warm. Well, my hell, let me make sure I line up this coat. I don't want it to hang sloppily I, because she's got a lot of a lot of things in here. I'm gonna make sure I smooth it out so it fits in with the other clothes. And let me make sure I smooth out the pockets a little extra. Just, oh, there's something in here. Well, you know, I, I don't want her to have something in her pocket and you know take it to the cleaners and accidentally clean something that should be put away. And you reach and you pull out a matchbook from a hotel. You've never been to this hotel with her before. She's never mentioned this hotel before. Hmm. Let me check her other pocket. I mean, I wouldn't want anything else to be in there, right? Put your hand in the pocket. A receipt for some stuff. But none of the stuff on here is the stuff that's in the house. Huh. Well, that's no big deal. People buy stuff when they're not home all the time. Not a big deal. But what about this matchbook? Should I put it back in her pocket and let her find it herself? Hmm? Because how am I going to explain that the matchbox came out of her pocket? It's a pretty deep pocket. You'd have to reach in to get it. I better put it back. Put it back. We go back out. You sit on the bed. And you're about to turn on the TV set, but now all of a sudden you're post getting cheated on Stephen. Not pre, you're not pre getting cheated on Stephen. Now all you can think of is all this disgusting thing she's doing with some other dude in that in that hotel room when you were gone. Now you don't even know that. Yeah. Can't believe she would do this to me as good as I am to her. I'm a cooking and being good to her and. Be, and go to the hotel room and all of that crap. And you don't even explain to her why you're mad. You're just mad. Right? And you're, she's trying to have a romantic evening with you, you know, and, and she's, you know, she's doing all the kissy, the lovey dovey crap and you're looking at her like, yeah, I bet you did that with that dude, didn't you? Right? You go back into the bedroom and jump on top of her. You get it on with it. But you're not getting it on with it like you normally get it on with it when you're enjoying the process and the love of the cosmos and the sweetness and all that crap. It's just this mechanical, let me put this in and boom, boom, boom and make sure she fin gets what she needs to get then I'll get what I need to get. Then you climb up off of her and she can tell the difference. You know, she knows the difference between what you normally do and what you just did. You know, it's a difference between somebody making a meal, a five... A five-star meal by a great chef who makes it exactly the right way, way and they put it in the right amount of heat and the right amount of sauce and seasoning and all of that crap. And some jackass making something for you at a diner when he's four minutes away from going home and he realizes the boss took some orders and the person that's supposed to relieve him isn't coming in. And he's making his punk ass hamburgers in the least, the most punk ass way because he doesn't really want to do this crap in the first place. But he has no choice but to do it. It was kind of like that. You got the job done, but it wasn't the same level of artistry that you normally had. And that's what happened. Oh, yes, it's awful. She's looking at you and trying to figure out what the hell that was. I mean, it felt good, but it wasn't the same explosion and all the good stuff you normally do. You didn't even do the, the, the little the little tiny things you normally do during the course of the thing. You just said, hey, put this in. Boom, 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 boom. You did finish yet. Good. Let me get my blow. And then you climbed off of her. And you go home. You don't even call her like you used to. You're post getting cheated, cheated on Steve, not pre-getting cheated on Steve, and you don't even want to talk to her anymore. And then she kind of figures it out, because when you put the matchbook back in her pocket, you put it back in backwards. And she calls you, 
And then she tries to make up this bullcrap story about, oh, I forgot to tell you, I went to the hotel with the girls. Yeah, sure you did. And she could tell by your voice that you ain't buying that crap. And then she starts crying. And then you go, I know what you did. She goes, but you, you, and then you break up with her too. And then you go to the next lady and you haven't healed from that emotional concussion and that relationship sucks. And then you, that falls apart. And then you go to the next one and then 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 the next one. Why? Because you didn't go through the emotional concussion protocol. You didn't take a while to let yourself heal a little bit. Right? You didn't take any time to let yourself heal a little bit. Sometimes you got to be by yourself a little bit. Sometimes you just got to hang out with your friends. Sometimes you just got to chill. Don't try to be in a relationship. Don't try to date. Just go to the porno sites. And I mean, not the, I mean, not porno sites. I mean, <clears throat> Eastern philosophy sites. <clears throat> the Eastern philosophy sites and read some Eastern philosophy. You know, read about Blasian milfs with big asses. I mean, I mean not not Blasian milfs. I mean, I mean, I mean the Confucius. And the, <laughs> <clears throat> but that's the way it is sometimes, man. You got to take some time, right? I didn't. I made when when I when I when I have to deal with the carjacking. One of the things I did was I. Gave myself a couple of weeks away from going back to that area because I was still a little freaked out and a little angry. I gave myself a little bit of time to chill out. When I drove to the place, I went a different way. I just wanted to chill a little bit, to calm myself down, to let the anger die down a little bit. And two weeks later, two weeks afterwards, what did I do? I drove right to that store, right to the exact same spot, parked my car, rolled down the windows, and just sat there and waited. I sat there for half an hour. And then I closed the car up, went into the store, bought something to eat, sat in the car, and ate it. And I did that every day for a month and all of a sudden that spot didn't mean anything to me any more than just a visit to the store when it comes to the ladies I had to take some time off too I had to chill I didn't want to be that guy I wanted to be I went from pre getting cheated on Steve to post getting cheated on Steve to S. Anthony Thomas he doesn't have, and S. Anthony Thomas doesn't have any problem parking his car anywhere he wants to go. No problem whatsoever. He even goes back to that spot when he's in Philadelphia and buys a couple of things. Doesn't think anything of it. He doesn't have any problems talking to women anymore. He doesn't have any trust issues. Either you can trust somebody or you can't. And I'm not going to hold that against anybody else that's new. I'm not going to do it. But I've wondered how many, how many different things happen to people you know, the quote, emotional concussion, the kind of thing that messes you up in your head, messes with you. And you don't give your chance, yourself a chance to chill out before you dive right back in again. I mean, damn, even your body gets a chance to heal when you work out, right? You take a day off after a heavy workout to let your body heal up. You don't jump right back into the gym and do chest day 10 days in a row, do you? Why? Because you don't want to have a torn peck. Now, why did I bring this up? Because I had somebody write to me um, at the email address and they were asking me, you know, because they had heard some of the other shows and they asked me, you know, you talk about cheating with the jokes and all the time, but what happened right after that? And I realized you can't just dive right back in right after you got your heart ripped out of your chest. It doesn't work that way. If you stub your toe, you got to protect the foot until the foot stops hurting, Right. And you know who you are. I would just say that. Sometimes you just got to chill a little bit. You got to go hang out with your boys. Have some fun. You don't need to go up and just because somebody has a nice body part that jiggles in front of you. You don't have to go and I have to go have sex with that woman just because. I don't do that. Don't make that person the rebound lady. Because if you do that, you'll start to feel better about yourself. Well, I was just cheated on. But this super hot woman, I, I smiled at her and showed her my dimples and my cheeks. And I, and I took her home and I'm, we went to boom, boom, jiggy, boom, boom, jiggy, boom, boom, jiggy, boom, boom, jiggy, boom, 
and we tried, we tore each other up and I felt good about myself, but I really don't like her as a person that much. She just looks really, really hot. But now that I've built my self-esteem back up by, by thrusting inside of her body and getting told I looked great, I feel great. Well, I can discard her now. And now what did you do? Bang, you healed yourself, but you sent her away with an emotional concussion. And now she walks away thinking dudes ain't crap. She met somebody at a bar. She thought it was a nice guy. He has nice dimples. He was sweet. He was charming. And you went and you said, you know what? Normally I don't do this, but he's such a sweet guy and such a nice guy. I think I'm going to boom, boom, jiggy, jiggy, boom, da, boom, jiggy, jiggy, boom, boom, jiggy, jiggy, boom, da, boom, jiggy, jiggy with him. And then she goes back with you and boom, boom, jiggy, jiggy, boom, jiggy, boom, jiggy, jiggy. And then once you boom, boom, jiggy, jiggy, boom, da, boom, jiggy, jiggy her and get your boom, 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 boom. And you jiggy, jiggy in her boom, boom. And then you get rid of her. And now she takes that and goes off to somebody else. But what if you gave yourself a time to chill? and to rebuild yourself back up. It may only take a few months. You don't know. It might even take a six months. Who knows? It may take a year. Who knows? But now you're back to normal. Now you're feeling like you. And then when you meet this woman and you can decide, well, I really, she's attractive, but I don't really want to get it on with her because I don't feel that way about her. But she is hot. I'm not going to use her body and all that kind of thing. I'm not going to do that. I'm not that type of cat. And you run across someone that you actually like, you actually connect with, you actually care about. And then when you take her home and boom, boom, jiggy, jiggy, boom, boom, each other's brains out you won't be discarding each other you'll be you'll stay together and enjoy each other's company and there will be no emotional concussion to heal from i've been on both sides of that I've been the rebound guy that boom, boom, jiggy, jiggy, boom, da, boom, jiggy, jiggy, and then go, oh, that was, that was fun, young man. Get away from me now. I just wanted to use your genitals for a few hours, and now that I've done that, I'm going to send you away with emotional scars. Go ahead and ruin someone else's life. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> you know, and I've also inadvertently boom, boom, jiggy, jiggy, boom, da, boom, jiggy, jiggy, but someone, I didn't discard her, but it was like, it just started to fall apart because I knew we shouldn't have been together. And I was like, I, I got to try to make this work. But it was just a waste of time for both of us. I shouldn't have done that. I tried to make a relationship work when I was still suffering from the emotional concussions of the two relationships with I, before that. So I feel right now I've I've completed the emotional concussion protocol and I'm ready to go on and lead my normal healthy life. And I know that there's a lot of you out there. You've been there before. I've seen your posts on Facebook. I've seen your tweets. I've read your DMs. I know what's happening to you. I know your wife left you. Your husband left you. I know your girlfriend's a piece of crap. Your boyfriend's a piece of crap. All I'm saying is give yourself time. Just like that football player that got need in their head. You don't want to go back out on the field a little bit too soon because if you're wobbly, people will take advantage of you. And if you're not wobbly, you'll probably try to take advantage of somebody else. Put your punk ass in that tent. Just like that football player got in that tent, pull it over yourself, run some tests to see whether or not you're back to normal. Maybe talk to somebody who can tell whether you're back to normal. At the very least, give yourself some time before you come back out the tent and jump back on the field. Because if you come back out on the field too early, you're just going to get your brains rattled again. So all I'm saying is, you bastards, whenever you go through something like that, whatever it is, whether you it's some kind of traumatic thing, Make sure before you go back out on the field, you go through the emotional concussion protocol. So when you're ready to play, you're ready to play. You dig? Of course you do. Segment over. You know, normally I don't kind of stick with the same theme through the whole episode, but I'm going to stick with something kind of similar to what I talked about in segment one. How sometimes you got to go cold turkey with stuff, right? Yeah. I talked about it in an earlier podcast, but somebody asked the question. I'm going to tell you this. I'll give you an illustration of what I'm talking about. I put out a picture on Instagram a little bit earlier today where I had a skinny friend of mine while we were talking and we were talking about how I'm going to be I'm trying to get, eat good and live good and try to eat good and be good and all of that crap. And the bastard, while he's sitting there, he takes out, he opens up his little bag and sits down while I'm talking to him and busts open two big giant pieces of chocolate cake right in front of me now i've never actually seen him 
eat two big pieces of chocolate cake. He's one of those skinny bastards that could actually pour, you could pour a gallon of lard down his stomach and he'd, he'd do one and he'd do a half of a sit up and he, he'd get his six pack back. One of those bastards. He's one of those pieces of crap. You know, and he's sitting there eating the two pieces of chocolate cake right in front of me. Anyway, yes, Anthony, saying, uh, uh, let me eat this cake right in front of your fat ass. And I'm looking at him and I'm sitting there. You ever see those movies where the person is talking and you're hungry and then the person looks like a piece of chicken or something like that? You ever seen those movies? I'm sure you have. Well, have you ever seen those other movies where a person is sitting in a car next to his friend who's eating a piece of chocolate cake and he reaches over and punches him in the throat? Have you ever seen those movies? You will after I get arrested for punching him in the throat and becomes one of those 48 hour stories. (laughs) I did not do that. But I often wondered, are we more sensitive when we give up on certain things and we become so hypersensitive to it that we we begin to really notice stuff that didn't that wasn't going on there before? Like I had friends that were there was an alcoholic and he were hanging out at the bar and he wasn't there. But then he shows up at the bar and we're looking at him like, why are you in a bar, dude? And he goes, oh, it's OK, not a problem. You know, I got you guys to look out for me. Right. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, it's our job to wrestle him to the ground when one of the waitresses walks by with a beer and he has a 17 foot straw and tries to stick it in someone else's drink. So now we got to keep looking at this bastard and he's looking at the drinks and licking his mouth and staring at him. He's trying to have a conversation with the bastard and he's staring at somebody's beer. And, eh, but that beer tastes good, Bill, Bill. No, I mean, not that I would want any of the beer. I'm just saying that I'm sure but I bet that beer tastes real good, right? Hey, with the frost, the froth on top of it and all of that, it's nice and cold because it's hot outside and the beer would be real good. Why don't we get you a soda beer? The soda don't have froth on the top of it. Got all those damn ice cubes in it, but you don't have ice cubes and beer. Beer comes, the beer's already cold. But what do you have? Oh, vodka and cranberry. Oh, yeah, I like cranberries, but definitely when they have vodka around them, I like the cranberries, but good, but it's not as good as when that vodka. Maybe you should leave the bar. No, that's okay, all right. And then he starts complaining, you guys are drinking a lot more. Are you doing it to mock me? And to be honest with you, no one changed anything. No one was drinking more to mock him. In fact, we didn't even want his punk ass there. We actually went to the bar knowing he was going to be working someplace else. And then we were going to meet him at another place that did not have alcohol in it. But we weren't alcoholics. He's an alcoholic. We're not alcoholics. He's an alcoholic. And as his friend, we were going to go to where he was where he can kick it and enjoy his company without the alcohol around but Captain Slickass decided to show up there because he knew that's where we were going to be and he's sitting there damn near vibrating in his chair because everything he wants in the world is walking by on trays and on the tables with other people and the waitress that walked by was a gorgeous young lady wearing a revealing outfit and we're all sitting there trying our hardest not to objectify not to look at her delicious buttocks and delicious breast we're not going to do it we're all making it a point we all had girlfriends at the time so we're even not not only we're not trying to objectify her because it's the wrong thing to do but we also do don't want to do even though our girlfriends are not there we love our girlfriends and we're not going to look we're just going to be everybody's the same every human being's the same every that greasy dude over there who's busting the tables is the same as that delicious woman with delicious buttocks and breasts at least i think she has delicious buttocks and breasts i don't know because i wasn't looking at her back to bill He's not even paying attention. He's looking at her, licking her lips, and she's looking at him like, you disgusting bastard. And then she realized he wasn't looking at her delicious buttocks and breasts. She was looking at the beer. Now she's even more offended, like, how the hell are you going to look at the damn beer and not look at all of this, you punk-ass bastard? She was even mad about that, that bastard. And we just paid the tab and dragged his ass out and I said, Bill, stop coming to this place. We came here before we met you so you wouldn't have to come here. He needed to go cold turkey. He wasn't ready to be around alcohol yet. We had to get him out of there. We had to get him out of there. But because he wanted alcohol so badly, he saw us drinking and thought we were mocking him by drinking by drinking more, which was not the case. But sometimes people will be slick and do that. I've seen people do that to people they knew were alcoholics. Guy knows the guy's an alcoholic and he's drinking the beer in front of him. Yeah, this beer tastes good. Oh, yeah, look at all this delicious beer. And give me 12 more beers and, and put on each bout, put on each of the, can you do me a favor and get a spray can and a stencil and write, too bad you can't have any of this bill, you drunk bastard. 
and put it on each one of these beer steins good. Like, did you just have them right? Too bad you can't have any of this, you drunk bastard Bill on the on the beer bottle and the cans. No, why, why would I do that? Sir, do you want us to write Bill? You can't have any of this alcohol, you loser drunk bastard on anything else? No, 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 of course I didn't say that. <laughs> okay, it wasn't that bad, but you get the point. He was mocking him by drinking in front of him. My girlfriend did that to me, an ex-girlfriend. It was, you ever been with someone, but you, you, you care about them, but you know they're unhealthy for, for you. But when you get it on and you know, if you get it on with them or even come close to getting on with them or even come in contact with them, you're going to wind up upstairs pounding each other that's senseless in the bedroom and just destroying each other. And you say, you got to stay away from me. You got to stay away from them until you're over them. Right. Right. And I was a young man at the time. Right. With the sex drive of a young man and in good shape, which means boom, boom, jiggy, jiggy, pound, 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 flip the calendar page. Still going. Still going. Nothing stops the you know, that kind of thing, like the Duracell battery commercials from the 80s. Nothing stops this Anthony from. You know what I'm saying? I was dead like that. And one day I'm walking down the street and I'm hoping that I'm just going to go about my day. And then she comes by. Right. And I, we had broken up and I told her that we got to stay away from each other. I, we don't, we're not healthy for each other. And she walks by. What a coincidence. And what a coincidence. What dress she happens to be wearing. And then all of a sudden she puts her bag down and she hugs me. And then she, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. She, she's looking through her bag and she turns her back. She puts her bag behind us and she bends over to get the bag. And then she comes over there. And she's like leaning over in front of me. I know her. She, I was in a relationship with her. I know her moves. I know what she She's doing. She's displaying the delicious chocolate to entice me to come back to her, at least to jump on top of her. Because he knows if I jump on top of her, I'm going to wind up with her for another six months. Because whenever we would break up, if somehow she got me someplace and she then and she and I jumped on top of her, she knew she she'd have me for another six months at least, you know. And I'm going, oh no, you don't. Oh no, you don't. I know you're wearing the dress that I bought for you, and I, I used to. And on special occasion, I would have you wear that dress because I used. I like that dress to be the dress she take. She would take off before I jump on top of her and give her the good, good. And I'm not talking about the regular good, but sometimes you give her the extra good, good because you see that dress on her, and you would be extra good, good, ready to give her the good, good. And I gave her the good, 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 good. So she wouldn't. I said, "Don't wear that dress if I can't have no good good. Just that just, that dress is only to be worn when the good good's gonna happen. Please do that for me. You got a whole lot of dresses in there. That's the good good dress. You put that dress on, you gonna get the good good. In fact, it was the incredible incredible, but good good sounds better because I like the G sound. F y'all. So she's wearing the good good dress, and I'm saying, well, maybe she's wearing the good good dress because she knows it's the best thing she wears, and she didn't know I was coming down this block. She just likes it, and you know, she's we're not together anymore. It doesn't matter. Maybe she's wearing the good good dress with somebody else. That's none of my business. It's none of my business. We're not together anymore. We're not together anymore. And the next thing you know, I'm on top of her giving it a good 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 good. And I thought it was a coincidence. It wasn't a coincidence. Some of her friends said they saw me shopping at that store. And I used to shop at the store at exactly the same time because I was on the way home. So now she knows I'm going home. And she knows where I'm going to be. And she puts on the good, 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 good dress. No one, I'm going to be seeing her in the good, 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 good dress. And she knows if, she, if I see her in the good, 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 good dress. And she offers me the good, 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 good. I'm going to take her someplace. Most likely my place. But it doesn't matter if it's her place. Whatever is a closer place. And give her the good, 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 good. And I gave her and because I hadn't seen her in about four months, she got the good, 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 you know, just like the people, the guy drinking in front of the drunk guy. He was just, hey, you bet you want some of this juice. I bet you want to drink this, don't you? <laughs> and, which ironically is kind of what she said to me. I bet you want to drink these. <laughs> and I went, and then I said, well, you know, really, it's not healthy for, I mean, we have an unhealthy relationship. Of course, when we, we're, not, we're, naked, we're naked doing stuff to each other, that part's great. But what about the other 20 hours a day? You know, what are we going to do then? We're not healthy for each other. And, you know, we should, we should be mature. I mean, we're both young adults, but we should be mature enough to realize that you can't base a relationship that's going to be sustainable and healthy on just that. <laughs> 
I'm just kidding. I was in my early 20s. I didn't say that. I took her home and banged the crap out of her. I just told you that. Didn't you just hear me say I gave it a good, 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 good. A good 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 didn't you not just hear me say that did you really buy that crap didn't that didn't what i just say that whole we need to be in a healthy relationship didn't that sound like someone my age saying crap like that how many 20 year olds or 22 year olds or 24 year olds or 25 year olds when a super hot sister with a delicious buttocks and breasts that you used to have sex with regularly and you tried to break up with it because it was nothing but banging and a relationship was unhealthy and not going to really go anywhere and she decided she wanted to jump on top of you again because she knew she could control you if she put on the good 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 dress so she put on the good 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 dress walked in front of you knowing you were going to walk down the block and then you took her home and gave it a good 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 a good 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 you get the point i have to say it 55 more times but you get the point and i needed to go cold turkey i needed to go cold turkey and she kept doing it. She kept showing up in a good, 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 good dress. And one day, one day I was strong enough. One day she walks up in a good, 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 good dress. And it didn't have any effect on me. I mean, I still found her attractive. But I didn't want to take her home and give it a good, 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 good anymore. Because I realized what she was doing. Sometimes, man, you got to just go cold turkey on certain things. You got to get away from certain things. Like we took my friend Bill. We got him the hell out of the bar. Got him the hell out of the bar for his punk ass. Went back in the bar, got drunk and got his ass whooped because when he got drunk, he got his ass whooped. And I got tired of fighting people to keep him from getting his ass whooped. And I started to think, what about I'm with this woman and, and, and if she's manipulative enough to ask to find out from her friends where I'm walking and then dig out the good, 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 good dress and just have how many days did she walk that route at that time when I wasn't there hoping I was there? Isn't that kind of sick? How many times did she walk that route hoping that I would be walking down? There was a couple of times where I was doing gigs out of the city for like two or three weeks, which means she probably walked that route every day for those that time hoping I'd walk by just as so she could walk by in the good, 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 good dress so I could take her back to my house or take her back to her house and give it a good, 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 good. That's weird. That's manipulative oh no I can't be with somebody like that I can't do it and if she's manipulative enough to walk the same route every day for three weeks just on the off chance that she could catch me so she could show me the good 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 dress and I could take her back home and give it a good 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 isn't she manipulative enough to do something to the condoms hmm? or to pick the condom up and do and all of a sudden she was trying to control me with the good 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 and then all of a sudden, what about if, when I'm giving her the good, 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 she put a pinhole in the condoms. And now instead of just giving her the good, 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 I'd be giving her the good, 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 plop. And the good, 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 plop, plop, plop. Just went away. Hold the baby. And now I'm stuck with her for 18 years. Oh, no. Oh, sometimes you just got to go cold turkey on things. Right. So we'll now go back to that jackass in the car with the cake and I'm looking at him and he's eating the cake and he asked me if I want some. And did I want some cake? You're damn right. In fact, if he didn't ask me if I wanted the cake, I was very, very close to going, hey, what's that over there? And then cracking him over the head with the club. You know, the club that you use to lock your, your steering wheel. Yeah, I still use that. Shut up, bastards. And cracking him in the head and just eating the cake. But I said, no, you can't crack him in the head, mainly because you'd never do that in the first place. And no, you can't eat any of the cake. Had he caught me at an earlier time, I might have taken a piece of cake. He might have given me the other half of the cake, the piece, the other big piece of cake. He might have given that to me. And then another earlier time, I would have taken that crap and I would have shoved it down my throat. I would have been, I would have had it in the passenger seat with a fork in my right hand driving and I'm forking it into my throat. And then I would go home and there would be no cake left and I would be going, damn, I really wanted to sit down and watch this movie and eat some cake. But since the cake is gone, I guess I got to go and get some more. And then all of a sudden. All of a sudden, I'd be eating cake. I'd be eating cake the same way I gave that girl the good, 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 good. Ironically, when I was eating, if if I was to eat the cake, I probably would have been going, this is good, 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 good. But it wouldn't be exactly the same thing because it would be cake and not sex and my pants would be on. <laughs> and the cake would not go out into the balcony and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. But I'm telling you, man. Yeah. 
Sometimes you got to go cold turkey on things. And I know now that the, that I, even though now I'm at the point where I'm strong enough to resist these things, there was a time when I wasn't. There was a time when I wasn't. And I know it's the same thing for you bastards. Sometimes you got to go cold turkey. Sometimes you just got to say, I got to tough this out. Sometimes you got to just walk away from it. Got to walk away from it. Got to walk away from the cupcakes. You got to walk away from the beer if you're strong enough to walk away from the beer. You know, like if you, if you, if you, you got, you got your 40 day chip, your 160 to 5 day chip, your 300 day chip. You know, bars have not been burned down. You got to stay away from those places. You got to stay away from them. Don't tempt yourself. Don't play games. You don't want to have a 300 day chip, then six, drink six beers is getting into a fist fight and wake up on the ground upside down in the trash can with you, and you're going damn I gotta go back to chip number one or something like that you know you don't want to jump on top of the girl and give it a good 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 and next thing you know you got a baby with somebody you don't even like oh no you can't do that you can't get out of that it's not like she's gonna go well I know I tricked you into getting me pregnant but I'm gonna let you not have to pay child support to see the kid not that you would ever do that but you don't want to be in that situation oh no and you damn sure don't want to have your skinny punk ass friend eating that punk ass cake in front of your punk ass face. And then you take your punk ass fork and jam it into the punk ass cake and start digging the punk ass cake. And all of a sudden you start eating the punk ass cake. And then your punk ass is a big fat punk ass with your punk ass selves. Sometimes you have to go cold turkey, my friends. And I realized when I saw my friend with that cake which I did not eat, by the way, and didn't even come close to eating, that it was time for me to take all of that stuff and go cold turkey. Yeah. Cold turkey. With a slice of cheese on it. Some bacon. Lettuce, tomato. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. No cold turkey, but cheese, no cheese. Take the cheese off. No cheese, no cheese, no cheese, no cheese. Uh, maybe, a little, maybe, maybe a little bit of turkey, some wheat bread, some lettuce and tomato, and then a, a small amount of spicy mustard. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with a milkshake. No, no milkshake. No milkshake. No, 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 no milkshake. With, 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 with water with a little lemon in it. Yeah, that, that, that. <sighs> Like I always say, it's a work in progress. <laughs> Second over. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, James Hatton here. And Podcast Rob, and we're the Something Something Cast. You can find us on Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play. As well as somethingcast.com and hashtag Potter and Family, where you can find thousands of podcasts for all your listening needs. Also, give a check out to our Patreon at patreon.com slash something something cast. We are looking to make 2017 bigger and better, and you can help out by supporting the show. Thanks for listening. So, okay, here we go. Well, folks, this has been episode number 283 of the S. Anthony Says Podcast, and I want to thank you very, very much, as always, for stopping back and saying hello to yours truly. And, uh... Uh, apparently we, we, we really connected with each other and I want to thank you very, very much. I appreciate all the kind words and all the, all the goodness. I know I say this all the time, but you keep being good to me. What am I supposed to do? Go, you know, they were really, really good to me as always, but I'm not going to mention it this time. I'm getting sick of them being so damn cool. I'm going to take them for granted now. In fact, I'm going to say some rude stuff to them to teach them a lesson. Listen, all that crap about we love your show. So what, losers? You're a genius. I know I'm a genius. Did, did you think I don't know that? Your show's awesome. I know my show's awesome. You should, you lucky that I'm doing this show because I'm so damn great. Yeah, well, I'm not one of those jackasses. <laughs> I'm one of those people that actually appreciates people when they're, when they're kind to me. And, uh, and you've always been kind to me, guys. I want to say thank you very much for that. Uh, hello, Australia. Thank you very much for the new listeners. Thank you very much, y'all. I'll see, I'll see, I'll see, oi, oi, oi. I probably said that wrong, but give me a break. I know that then don't send me no damn email saying it's not said like that. I'm just trying to be nice, damn it. <laughs> That's one of the things that's hilarious is if you, you, you make like one little mistake and somebody, you'll get like a 15 page email. And the history of the saying, mm, it must be pronounced this way. I know. Just take sentiment, damn it. My Canadian bastards, thank you very much. You northern bastards. My American bastards, thank you very much. My home country bastards. UK bastards, thank you very much. 
You crumpet eating, driving on the other side of the road, bastards. Thank you much. I love all of you, every last one of you bastards. And I know there's some countries I didn't mention, but I haven't looked at the stats in a while. So don't think that I don't have love for you. I do. I really, really do. And and, and, if it, and just to prove it, you know what I'm going to do when I start going on tour again and I start performing? And I'm assuming some of you will probably come to see me. To make, the, just to show how much I care, I'm probably going to do whatever it takes to bang as many of you as possible. And then I think that that's, and I know the guys are going, but what about us? Uh, y'all getting handshakes. Come on, come get out of here. But um, <laughs> that's not self-serving. Okay, maybe it is self-serving. Okay, I will not bang any of you. <laughs> I am so much, I'm absolutely going to try to, to bang as many of you as possible. <laughs> this is kind of ruining the sentiment, isn't it? <laughs> well, never mind. I won't bang you. But I will say thank you and I will hug you and you will see how much I care about you bastards. Because I do. Because I know you care about me too. And I thank you for that. Now, this podcast can be heard damn near everywhere. The home base for this podcast is santhonysays.podbean.com. But this podcast can be heard on Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, iTunes, iHeartRadio. Like I said, uh, tune in radio, you know, basically what you have to do is you can just go to Google or any search engine and type in S. Anthony says, bam, I'm right there. Type in my name S. Anthony Thomas. Bam, I'm right there. Type in delicious chocolate junior genius. OK, that will not direct to me. But if enough people search delicious chocolate genius and then add my name to it, eventually you will look up delicious chocolate genius and bam, it'll come right to me. <laughs> That's your assignment. <laughs> Uh, on social media, if you go to Twitter, uh, the social media for me, for me specifically is on Twitter is at S. Anthony Thomas. For this particular show, it's at S. Anthony Says. Uh, S. Anthony Thomas is, is me on uh, on Instagram as well. S. Anthony Thomas 1 is me on Snapchat. Uh, on Facebook, if you do a search uh, in the search box at the top and you type in S. Anthony Says, it will go directly to my verified page on Facebook. Do me a favor, go there, like the page. I don't really promote the page that much, but I'm going to start using it more. So if you listen to this and you dig this guy that's talking right now, go to Facebook, search as Anthony says, you see my verified page with the blue check mark, like this page. Also follow me on social media because starting next year, I'm going to start using it a lot more for some other things that I think that you're going to like. And the email to me, if you have questions or comments, and if you want to you want to ask something and have me answer it, answer it on the air, and I will, unless it's dopey, uh, the email, <laughs> the email is talk to S Anthony at gmail.com. But if you go to listen, to, if you go to the, um, if you, if you're listening to the uh, podcast on anything, essentially all the contact information is in the show notes and you can just click on it. If you're if it's searchable on, on whatever you're using or just cut and paste it, but all the information is right there. Much love to every last one of you. And I seriously, sincerely mean that every last one of you in whatever country you're listening in much love to you, you bastards. I love you. And I'm going to say goodbye the way I always say goodbye on the count of three. And I know you do it with me. So are you ready? Are you ready in your cars in California in the traffic jam that you say that you listen to me during? And you're in Australia and you're driving around. Are you listening to this in the car? Well, are you listening to this in the treadmill? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as you can hear this voice, you know you're talking to somebody that loves your punk asses. And I'm going to say goodbye on the count of three. Say it with me. Are you gonna? Of course you are. One, two, three. S. Anthony. Out.